Another week of Grimlar proving why it's my anime of the season. God damn, that was brilliant. The characters are developing so strongly as this goes on. We're starting to really get a feel for who each character is. There's even been a little bit of growth already, even though we're not 100% sure who the characters are yet. Oh man, you can see who's starting to fall for who already. Which you would expect, since they're a bunch of like young adult or teenage adolescents living together in a house. That's obviously going to happen. And I like that that's where the ecchi comes from in this. Even though the first episode had a bit of random ecchi, the second episode didn't have so much. It had a little joke towards the end. This one, all the ecchi just came from the adolescent side of the character's brains. And that's fine. Like, teenagers are going to be perverted with each other. So if that's why they're putting in ecchi because the guys are interested, then yeah, why the hell not? Put it in for that reason. So this week, that beautiful art in the backgrounds that we're so used to got made in 3D, and my god, that was just gorgeous. When they were moving around this new town that they're visiting, like the camera would move around, different bits would move at different speeds, making it have a 3D effect. God damn. Something that looks that gorgeous, looking 3D, oh, it was so cool. I've never seen them put that much attention into animation in an anime that's currently airing. God, it was gorgeous. They know what they're doing with that animation style. And as well as that, they're strengthening it with that OST that they're using so damn well. The soundtrack for this anime is so damn good. They had that soft ballad for the shopping scenes in the last episode that was just so out of place but so perfect. In this one, they've got so many songs that just work as perfect background music for a fantasy kind of setting. But then at the same time, they'll throw in some rock music every now and then that really gets your heart pumping. When they first went to explore the new town, again, the beautiful artwork was one thing. Once they got used to it and started taking out the map, oh man, that little kind of rock music that they played, it wasn't really rock, it was like high energy pop, I don't know. It I don't know, I wouldn't call it rock, but it was good. It had the guitar solos, it was so damn high energy. And it worked perfectly for how much progress they were making and how happy they were getting about everything. I mean, I like it, they're making the maps, they're exploring the area, that's my perfect kind of fantasy dream life right there. And not only that, they're preparing their tactics, they're taking out goblins while they're sleeping, they're fighting the goblins in groups at this point because they've gotten good enough to actually do that. Shihori and Yume are working well together as long-range specialists. Oh my god. This is so good. It's like, it's going quickly now. I mean, they've improved quite a bit now that they're actually able to fight groups. That's quite a bit of progress, but when you think about it, with how many different monsters there must be in this world, there's still so much to do. So it's not that they're shooting off in the way of progress. They've just made like a new tiny little step forward. I mean, goddamn, at the beginning of this episode, Haruhiro and pretty much all the guys couldn't wear underwear anymore. Their underwear had been worn down because they'd been wearing it so much. And the girls were about the same. They were wearing those short dresses and going commando. Goddamn. Got some good views out of that, I must say. And I do. I sympathize with Haruhiro because, God, that must be distracting. It must be really hard to resist the urge to actually do anything when you know that's the situation. <laughs> and I love how close Yume is getting to Haruhiro. She's clearly got a thing for him. She's slowly trying to make moves. And I feel bad for her. Because Haruhiro is just not making any moves on her. She's really trying to get him to. She's being really nice to him. She's kind of trying to seduce him. But she realizes she's not good at it. Because that's not the type of girl she is. She's like the tomboy, best friend kind of girl. And that's why she was kind of jealous of Shihoro at one point. She was, did the whole, oh, I'm not good with words kind of thing. She was clearly jealous over the whole thing that Minato is actively pursuing Shihoro. Whereas the guy that she actually wants just hasn't made any moves towards her at all. She was just happy for the fact that he said if they made a bunch of extra money, they'd actually have indoor clothes to wear. She took that as a compliment that maybe he wanted to see her dressing more nicely and see her body more. Oh man, that's so sad. Especially since we can already see that she's probably taking it a bit more harshly than she's letting on. That Ranta keeps talking about how she has no chest. God damn, that's annoying. 
And the worst thing about that is, is that Ranta is one of those childish people who's only insulting Yume because he actually likes her. I mean, I think he'd be quite happy dating either one of them just to have a girl around who didn't think he was disgusting all the time. But he does clearly like Yume as well. He gets embarrassed around her, he gets shy around her, he gets razzled by her. So he does have a thing for her, even if it is just a physical attraction, which it probably is knowing Ranta. Oh, it's just so annoying that they're tearing each other down like that. I loved the awkwardness after that scene. Ranta had clearly tried to spy on them again. They all apologized. And then it was just so awkward between the men and the women for the next day. That was so good. And it cleared up quite quickly. Which is good because it would have been bad if we spent a whole episode on just the whole women and men having a bit of a tiff thing. Because they've done that before in the last couple of episodes. Ranta is basically just constantly causing troubles between the men and the women. Meanwhile, Haruhiro is doing the opposite. He's becoming the bridge between the boys and the girls. Thanks to the fact that Yume's into him and doesn't see him as that much of a threat. Like, I liked <laughs> how weirdly she was trying to put it that she wouldn't mind if he saw her. Kind of thing. She, like, she was clearly trying to say, I'm interested in you. You can, like, try to see me if you want. Kind of thing. He just wasn't getting it and was just thinking that she was being nice, but goddamn. These characters are all so cute, man. Mogzo. All of his cooking, his whittling. His whittling was actually doing really well. That little goblin that he made looked so cool. And he's just so happy to be cooking all the time. Again, I love the attention, the detail they put into the cooking. They basically showed him making a whole stew at the first bit of this episode. And then finally we get to Minato. The priest... The sacrificial saviour, because let's be honest, he is carrying more death flags than anyone else ever. He's gotten to the point where everybody basically says they're relying on him, they love him, he's their leader. He's the mature one who looks after everyone, he's pursuing the girl who's so shy that she can't talk to anyone. I'm thinking he's going to die either in the next episode or episode 5. Probably episode 5, because episode 4 they showed a bunch of stuff in the preview and nothing really looked too bad so i'm thinking episode four they're going to get into some trouble episode five monado is probably going to have to die to save everyone else he's going to do it happily and oh it's going to be so bad chihuahua is going to be saved by the whole thing and crying her eyes out and so sad oh the whole group's going to fall to pieces for a bit that's what i'm thinking if monado doesn't die i would be so surprised they've set him up for it so damn well that whole moment like him and Haruhiro always have these moments at night where they talk about things and get into deep feelings when everyone else is asleep. But in this one, when they were actually talking about their original lives kind of thing, like Minato was talking about how he didn't think he had friends back home. And he probably didn't. With how smart and overly mature he is, he was probably one of those kids that was super intelligent, not in a particularly good school, bullied for it, hated his life, was considering suicide. And so this world is just a complete change for him. And he's so in love with his friends as it is now. He just wants to take care of them and look after them. And that's why I think this is going to go so bad for him. He's going to be willing to kill himself for them. And it's going to happen. Ah, But I literally have no idea what's actually going to happen in the next episode. <laughs> the episode preview was very vague. Just a bunch of normal things. Little fights. An old man who looks really cool. Who might be like the beginning of a big quest. And a special looking arrow kind of thing. It looks like an arrow. Maybe it's not an arrow. I, I can't tell. It looked like an arrow to me. But let me know what you guys thought of this episode in the comment section below. If you enjoyed it as much as me. God damn. It was great, right? <laughs> if you didn't, leave your comments in the... If you didn't and you want to disagree. If you still don't like how slow this show is going. How the character development is kind of vague overall. The fact that they use the music so damn much, which I love, but I can see other people may not like that. Let me know. I want to hear your views. And if you like this review, wreck that like button like you mean it. Subscribe if you haven't already to see more. And I will see you guys next time.